Welcome. Welcome to the very first City of Watsonville State of the City Address. I am Shaz Ra. I'm the President and CEO of the Pajaro Valley Chamber of Commerce and Agriculture. And tonight, you'll be hearing from City Manager Charles Montoya, Police Chief David Honda, and Assistant City Manager Matt Huppaker. On behalf of the Chamber, I would like to say that we are honored to be the voice of businesses who've invested in the success of our community. It is our business to create a strong local economy and champion for businesses to grow and thrive. I would like to say thank you to our City Council. If they would like to stand, I'd like to introduce them. We'll start with Mayor Felipe Hernandez in the back. Councilmember Garcia. Councilmember Villasich. Councilmember Kaufman Gomez. Councilmember Dutra. And Councilmember Hurst. I would also like to introduce those in attendance from the Pajaro Valley Chamber of Commerce and Agriculture's Board of Directors. <coughs> if you would please stand. <laughs> Chairman of the Board, Ramona Allen. <laughs> Laura Owen. <laughs> Fia Oman. <laughs> Beth Bigger. <laughs> Sylvia Sanchez. <laughs> Megan Solano and Kathy Conway. The city of Watsonville has so many new projects on the horizon, and it's my honor to introduce city manager Charles Montoya. Charles comes to us with 26 years, over 26 years, of a rich background in economic development and is leading Watsonville into an exciting time of growth. Charles, thank you. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Appreciate this for the first inaugural uh, State of the City Address. Um, I, w I guess I lost a bet with staff. I said only 20 people were going to show up, so that's a good thing. Um, I definitely want to thank the Chamber of Commerce. And how this kind of came about is that you know, we're doing so many things in the community as a whole. Uh, and I think it's important to engage the community, the citizens, the businesses, and let everybody know kind of what's going on. So. I'm going to go through a presentation. It's a little bit lengthy, um, but I think it's important to highlight kind of what's happening out there and what we see. And then I'm going to let uh, the police chief, Honda, talk a little bit about the things he's doing and what's happening there. And also uh, Matt Huffaker, the assistant city manager, is going to talk about a little about the future and kind of what's, been go what's going on and where we're going to be going. Um, so to start off, I definitely want to acknowledge, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad my, my wife and kid are here tonight. Um, I know uh, Chief Honda's wife uh, is going to be here, and while Matt Huffaker's wife couldn't be here, I want to thank them all for supporting these guys because this isn't an easy job and, and they helped me out. So now also I do want to say that everything that's accomplished in here is, is, not, is not me. It is we have a phenomenal staff, a number of departments, and it takes a big team of people to talk through this thing, but every single project on here it, you can hold one body pro, uh, uh, responsible for it, and that is the city council. Because everything that we're doing, we're succeeding, we're pushing forward with, is because of them. And I have a great city council, and I want to thank you all personally for bringing me here. I've been having a blast, having fun, and I just want to make sure as we move forward in the, in the coming years, this is, going to be an, this is going to be an event every year so we can let the community know kind of what we're doing and what's happening. So thank you all. So those of you that have met me and I've talked to in organizations, I normally never use notes. I normally, it's off my mind and my heart and kind of, but tonight I'm going to use notes to follow. I'll be reading a little bit, so it's a little bit different. But I wanted to make sure I didn't forget any component of what's out there. I want to go through it in detail and make sure I didn't miss anything. So the first thing is kind of what we've been working with here in, the, here in Watsonville is, you know, building blocks. We're building blocks for each department within the community, for the city services and everything we do, and we're building those relationships that we need to do. And so it looks like a big Lego you know, building block, because that's kind of what this is to start off with. So uh, first, 
you know, we're talking about improving our water structure, you know, looking at our projects that we've been doing throughout the city. The first one, you know, the city obtained uh, approximately $3.2 million to, in a grant to make improvements to the Cordelito uh, treatment plant. I mean, this will double our drinking water intake capacity and less demand on the groundwater. And this is the Coralito site. So this is very important, one of the big projects that was completed through Public Works. All these are Public Works projects here right at this moment. The next one is the city's uh, wastewater recycling plant. It uh, produces 1.3 billion gallons of uh, safe, reliable, and renewable recycled water for crop irrigation. The new storage faci facility will hold 1.5 million gallons of recycled water. And this was a total pro project cost upwards of $7 million. And we got to thank our partner agency, Paro Valley uh, Water, because they did so much to help us all move forward in this community with our water. The next one is uh, we're working on improving our aging water infrastructure. Um, we have pipes within the city that are between 50 and 80 years old. Um, so what the goal of the city has been is to, in the next 10 years, to at least uh, upgrade at least 20 miles of pipeline throughout the entire city. This year we've done approximately uh, 1.5 miles and we're continuing to, uh, to finish up this year. Next, we have three significant sewer lines that were replaced this year. Uh, the Manana Lane uh, Sanitary uh, Sewer Line and the Airport Freedom Trunk Sewer Line. Um, I was, it was nice enough for staff to make sure because of uh, Steve Palomasano and his department staff drag me out to the sites to look at the guys that are doing this on the street and the men and women that are out, out there in the trenches doing this and just recognize what they do. This is not easy and um, you know these things you get complaints these type of things but this is the great thing for the community and we need to continue to do that and you know I'll, I'll thank Steve and his department for dragging me out there and showing me and educating me. Um, next, uh, we're on track to meet the Chromium 6 uh, compliance by year 2020. You know, we secured a $500,000 grant to begin the process of looking at the filtering system and we hope to have everything completed and ready uh, for the final design by uh, mid or early 2017. So next I want to look at a little bit of traffic and, and safety improvement projects. Um, we've completed some school crossing upgrades upgraded 31 intersections near 13 middle schools and elementary schools. Um, we did new curb ramps, pedestrian crossings, cr uh, traffic markings, and street signs. All this was funded by a half a million dollar grant from the state. Uh, we've also installed 18 new uh, lights on Freedom Boulevard. Um, this was part of the Freedom Boulevard undergrounding project. It was about $1.2 million that was paid primarily by the utility companies. Next. Um, one thing that we recently started doing uh, and we brought to council a few months ago is looking at red curbing. We've had a lot of issues in the community where there are pedestrians that are almost hit by vehicles. Uh, they can't, people in passing cars can't see them walking between the cars because they're blocking crosswalks or fire hydrants or stop signs or those type of things. So what we started to do in communicating with council is we need to recurb a lot of these areas. We need to start looking at the safety improvements for these kids. This is all about safety. We recognize that there's high density areas in the neighborhood, but the safety of the pedestrians and the children and people flying by on skateboards needs to happen. So this is a project that will continue. It's about a year long project. We're educating the public, not just through our electronic means, but through newsletters, those type of, stuff, those type of items. And as we move forward, we'll look at uh, beginning to do enforcement to make sure that the safety enhancements that we're doing out there do take effect and people do pay attention to them. Um, we've also completed more uh, street improvements. We reconstructed Freedom Boulevard and Airport Boulevard. Uh, it's road construction, sidewalk improvements, bus stop upgrades, and new pedestrian crossings. Uh, we've got some environmental challenges coming up. Um, the uh, city's landfill, we have approximately two years left on this, and then the city needs to start looking at working with our partners throughout Santa Cruz and Monterey County on how we move forward beyond that. And we've started doing that through our public works department. You know, they've done a phenomenal job in this whole community, the residents and the businesses. You know, we met our goal of recycling 50% of waste from businesses and residents, and we've exceeded that. And now coming up with, with a new um, 
program and state mandate, we've got to look at achieving more of that through the restaurants and uh, to recycle food waste from grocery stores, restaurants, and schools. So we have a lot on our plate, but somehow, you know, the staff's been able to accomplish this and the community has helped out tremendously, the schools, everybody. So, I mean, congratulations to everybody on that. Uh, next, the city of Watsonville has been working closely with uh, Monterey and Santa Cruz County and the Army Corps of Engineers to look at the entire levy, to the improvement of the levy as a whole. At least twice a week, I get phone calls through, through my office. I think the council members get a lot of phone calls and emails regarding the levy and what we're going to do to upgrade it, enhance it, and move forward. I think we're on course right now. Uh, we are implementing a state grant for public outreach to get opinions back regarding the Army Corps Engineer upgrade options. And we hope to have the final design uh, or preliminary design completed uh, here in the near future. And this is something we have to get done uh, in order to avoid a flood that happened many years ago and affected the community. Um, lastly, on the next slide, Pinto Lake. Um, the city joined forces with uh, Santa Cruz County and the Resource Conservation uh, District to help treat the harmful algae bloom that is in Pinto Lake. We, we received a three quarters of a million dollar grant to go ahead and work to try and clean it up and the mitigation will start in early spring next year. And that is the goal from, from us. Um, one of the things I do want to mention real quick that we kind of uh, didn't include here was there are several significant hires that the city made this year that were important. One was our, our police chief. You know, we had a police chief that retired last year, Manny Solano, and he elevated this community uh, quite a bit with, our, with the police department and bringing in David Honda. He, now he needs to look at making it even a step further and, you know, I'm glad he came from us from San Jose and uh, we we're fortunate to get him. And then the second one was Matt Huffaker. We brought him in from uh, uh, Walnut Grove, no, Walnut Creek, sorry, like Walnut Creek, and um, he showed up here a couple months ago and he has not hit the, he has not stopped running. I mean, he's helped me out tremendously and just because there's so much going on, so I did want to mention that. So looking at, um, there's a lot of stuff going on here uh, in, the res in residential developments. The city has a number of developments that have come out that have been sitting there for a little while and I want to mention, you know, the handful of them out there. The first one is the Harkins, Harkins Loop Project. It's 40, 48 townhome units, uh, just under five acres. Uh, this is being done by Elite Development. Um, they are already grading. They're going to be going vertical very soon and, I, you know, they're, tonight they were gracious enough to help out and uh, donate some funds for the reception afterwards, so I want to recognize them for that. But this is a really great project for the city, looking forward to it. Uh, next is the uh, 445 Main Street. This is a preliminary design that has been submitted to the city and it has been a vacant lot for a number of years and uh, we're looking at forward for this com coming forward. This is a mixed use commercial residential project that will uh, have approximately 54 new residential units. Next is uh, Atkinson Avenue. It is a joint project between the city and the county. It's approximately 46 uh, units uh, part, uh, and they're affordable. So 20, 23 of those reside in the city, 23 reside in the county, and this has been done by Midpen Housing. The next one is 89 new home units uh, by the Sunshine Group. This is called Santa Victoria. They are in the process now. Uh, they've been working with me. I've been meeting with them almost on a weekly basis. They want to get up and going and grading here in the next month or so. Uh, they, this is Sunshine Development. They're another sponsor for tonight for, for the reception, so I definitely want to thank them. And they are really excited. This is one of the first uh, EB-5 projects to happen in this entire area. And so I'm, I'm glad to be able to experience that and be educated by that process. Next is the 1205 Freedom Boulevard. Um, it's about 16 new homes, uh, townhomes and about 42,000 square feet on a lot. So this just came through council earlier this year and uh, they're already up and going and trying to get these things built. The next one is 221 Airport, 40 townhomes. Um, this is done, being done by Ra Raid Fairhat. This was just approved by the council just mid this summer. So all these projects are coming to fruition fairly quick. 
And the last one on the housing side is 1482 Freedom Boulevard. It's 24 condominiums, and this was also just approved by the council about a month ago. Um, so it's important to highlight all the residential projects because here in the city we are limited in growth and annexations. So we got to work with what we've got. So we're trying to work with property owners and try and find the highest and best use for a lot of these. Housing is important. We need to have more of it. We, we also need to have a balance with what's coming up next, and that is commercial developments. Uh, we have a number of commercial developments that are going on, and I'll go through them real quick, and then I want to talk a little bit about the difference between residential and commercial next. The first one is, for a number of years, uh, the OWS were working with the city to work on the entitlements for the land and to build a FedEx. Well, it's definitely come to fruition. It's about completed. Um, they're probably gonna turn over the keys here in the next few months to Federal Express. And that's a phenomenal project. I looked at what the land looked like before, so I was pretty impressed and pretty shocked that you know, building a new bridge and a new road. And I think this is a primary development for the city of Watsonville because it's their main center hub here in Santa Cruz County. The next one is One Western Drive. This is somewhat controversial in a way, but it is at a major corner in the downtown area on the corner of Main Street and Freedom. Uh, it, you know, the hotel, uh, I think the height was, was, has been questioned by people in the community, but it's important to get this development underway. I think the design is being changed a little bit. We're working with the developer to make sure the footprint maybe may not as, be as big. So, but council did approve the project, and these projects are real important. I'll talk about hotel development here shortly as well. The next project is uh, 1715 West Beach. This again uh, is by Elite Development. They were working with the city for a while trying to get additional entitlements to that spot. It is on the side of an old aluminum extrusion spot. It doesn't look very appealing, but it's on a really good corner right off of Highway 1 and we wanted to maximize the use and they had a vision, we worked with them, there was a lot of obstacles in the way, but I, I've gotta say, you know, thanks to the partners that we have in the Farm Bureau and the Chamber of Commerce and council working with us, uh, we were able to bring it forward and get this done and entitled and I know that we're gonna have six restaurants as it says there, two more hotels, a drive-in Starbucks, it, it's going to look like a classy, high-end development, and we are excited to see this come through. Next, um, 398 Technology Drive. This is a medical office complex. It's about 40,000 square feet with 20,000 square feet on um, facilities on a, just under four acres. This is uh, already in the works, and it should be getting final plans uh, through the building department here in the near future. So next, I want to talk a little bit about commercial residential. Um, the way I explain this to a lot of people is that there really needs to be a balance here. Um, for every dollar that the, the city may spend on resources, the majority of every dollar will go to providing resources to residential units. It costs considerably less to provide it to commercial. So the more residential we continue to have, whether it's market rate, whether it's affordable, it costs more to provide those services via police, via fire. It's just a fact. So we need to figure out a way, and this is one of the things I've been mentioning to a number of people in the business community and residents, that we do need to look at the highest and best use for some of the properties we have in the city since we're limited. We need to find a way to balance that commercial and go a little bit more vertical so that we can have those, those revenue streams to support the services in the community. If we continue to outpace commercial with residential, at some point it'll cost the city more and we'll have to reduce services or something we'll have to give. So it's important to have a, an active commercial activity and development and work with the business community. So. Next, <clears throat> we, have, we have some community challenges. And um, homeless has been one of them over the last, you know, definitely since past before I was here. But since I've been here, we've kind of changed a little bit about how we address these things. I think for a period of time, uh, for a number of years, I was told five to seven years, the city would go out uh, on a monthly basis, one week a month, and kind of help clean up the trash in the sloughs, the trash in the, in the trails, come, some of the homeless de uh, uh, developments, the baskets left everywhere. And it just, that would kind of leave the town looking kind of murky in a lot of areas and just not well kept. 
we got with the staff, we kind of changed how we looked at things. Um, we started doing it now weekly. It's a weekly basis where we send staff around between the Public Works Department, Parks Department, Police Department, and we work with uh, the homeless, and, and the Police Department works with the homeless. They also have someone uh, that helps them with their social service needs, their mental health issues. We have a lot of um, partners in the community, uh, like Paro Rescue Mission, the Teen Challenge, the Salvation Army, where we have a lot of bed space. It's not fully used. So we're trying to redirect the homeless there. But as we are all learning, the homeless normally don't want to go there. A lot of them have, may have mental issues. They may have substance abuse issues. So it's kind of hard to get them there, even though the, the, there's availability. So what we need to do is try and help the community and help educate them and also maintain the trails and maintain the neighborhoods and maintain the trash, which is important for a quality com community. So next is graffiti. Now, this has been a huge topic over the last few months. Um, we had a, just a total mess around the entire city between residential, commercial, um, we had graffiti everywhere and we've been trying to keep on top of it. We do work with our partners in the business community and in residential areas to try and deal with graffiti when they see it um, or contact the city and, and we'll work with them. We do have a team of people that are trying to help out. A few years ago we did have the graffiti task force. We're re-looking at that as we get more resources on board. It is important to make sure this city is cleaned up and so we're continually to try and do that. We are on top of it. It just takes a little while and we will get to it. And, and we encourage the community and the businesses to reach out to us and let us know what they see because we need to get on top of it. Next, uh, medical cannabis. Huge topic since day one when I walked in the door. Um, from my standpoint, this is my fourth go round with it. You know, I, did this in Colorado when it was medical marijuana there and recreational marijuana and then I did it in Arizona when it was medical marijuana. So coming here, it's, it's not new to me. Um, and I think there, with medical cannabis, there are needs that people use it for within the community. Uh, and I, I recognize that and I believe council recognizes that. We also, though, as we go through this process, we want to if, if you've watched one of the meetings where the council's up here discussing a permit or this activity, the, the CUPs that come through, it is an active discussion. It, it is not something they're brushing through real quick because at times they're getting educated just as the general public is. This is an important topic and I think what we've seen is that council wants to take small steps to make sure it gets done right. You know, they not just open up the floodgates and then trying to have to stop and back up the truck and I think if we do it in a methodical manner and we get this done right, you know, over the next few months, you're going to see if council uh, wants to do manufacturing, where there's some that want to do manufacturing in the area, how many, if, how many dispensaries, if anything. But it is going to be a process so that we have a committee that, uh, that we have a staff that works with the committee that are going through those issues, and then we bring them to council. So it, it's an educational process for all of us, and it's not an easy process. Um, but I think it's well needed and it's, and it's, I think, a great educational thing for everybody. So next, um, small businesses. We put this in here because um, earlier this year, you know, we, we had a number of businesses, seven, eight businesses that received eviction notices in the community. And I think my phone flew off the hook. I think every council member's phones, emails blew up um, because the city didn't know anything about it. Um, we found out after the fact, we worked with the employer coming in and we worked with those businesses to find them additional time before they had to relocate, find them additional money so that they can use for additional rent somewhere else, help them locate. We worked with partners in the community, uh, realtors, people to help them look at contracts, those type of t things, help them relocate. But what I want, what I want to say is th I think there's a perception sometimes that the city or myself or the council can intervene in a business enterprise and tell a business, well, you can't kick them out. You can't terminate their lease. You can't move them. You can't, we can't do that. We can assist and we can facilitate and we can help them. But we need to make sure, I want to make sure the, the community knows that we're out there helping as much as we can, but the business owners are not required or the property owners are not required to let us know when they're going to evict a client or how that works. 
but we are doing our best to work with the Chamber of Commerce and everybody to help facilitate when those businesses did get their eviction notices. Communication and public relations. Um, we are really approaching a number of new avenues when it comes to communication in the city. Uh, you know, I think from our standpoint, we think it's vital and it's real important, and I know the council wants to get their voices out there to communicate on every facet and every medium we can to everybody. So what we've been doing is not only is the monthly newsletter, we're continuing that and doing it electronically and also mailing that out, but one of the things that was critical and a concern of mine when I was hired in October by the council, I wanted to start doing more research and try and find documents to the website and, and look at what's going on in the departments. I got lost. I was just like, the website was not so user friendly. Then I tried to pull it up on my phone and it doesn't work on my phone. Uh, it just does not. So we are doing a new undertaking as of a few months ago. We brought a consultant on board to redevelop our website. It's going to make it more friendly. It should be done. We've appointed a member from every department to make sure every department's individual website contains the data and information that's available to the public. And that should be completed here in the next few months. And not only that, it will work on people's cell phones, which is important. Social media, I think uh, the staff here is active, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, their YouTube channel. Um, they're trying to make sure that they find every medium possible to communicate with the general public. Excuse me there. Watsonville TV. Um, I think this one and the next one go hand in hand. The staff has been working continually on developing new program for Channel 70. Whether you have charter communications or you have AT&T, they're trying to develop new methods to provide programming there. And on, on top of that, one of the big things was from council was making sure if you don't have those two mediums and you can't make it to the council meeting, you've got to be able to watch it somewhere. So starting in January, we started live streaming all the meetings on the internet so anybody can get them from anywhere at all. And I think it's important for not just staff, but for the council to communicate the message to everybody available if you can't come to these meetings. So that's been happening. As far as electronic news, anytime something happens of importance or that we need to get out to the community, we make staff make sure uh, we continue on the email list and get things out to everybody. And lastly, one of the big things that, that I remember council asking me uh, when I interviewed is how, how do I deal with relationships? How do I work those inner relationships within the community? <clears throat> well, it's a big part. You know, the city is a facet within the community as a whole. And when you hear me talk, I talk about the greater community because whether it's the Farm Bureau or the Chamber of Commerce or any other group, you know, the Rotary Clubs, these are people that I continue to try to embrace because we all got to work together in order to move forward. And whether it's a school district or whoever, I find value in developing and continuing those relationships and I have gone overboard to make sure that we do a better job. It's been very important for me. Next, um, Public Works has, has, this year has done three different uh, things to do outreach for, for the community. Water conservation, keep Watsonville clean, and safe drinking water. They've reached well over 25,000 residents. This is going to be a continual process. They're going to do this year in and year out. And I think they're getting a lot of positive input uh, back from everybody. So we'll continue those and expand as we can. Um, community events. Um, the holiday in the plaza, you know, we we're lucky enough to have uh, a business donate that tree and have that whole ceremony. That, that was beautiful. The 4th of July, I, I think we had 80 some odd floats. We had, uh, I think, everybody from the entire community, from every organization, participate with a float and see thousands of people downtown. The holiday sale, where you have several businesses uh, located here in Watsonville open their doors and discount a lot of their merchandise. Seeing how many people come out is kind of amazing. The Birding Festival. This one's coming up here at the end of September 22nd, I believe, through the 25th. This is, this is a big thing for Watsonville. Huge. In that all these people are not just coming from Santa Cruz County and California, but the, the, United, the United States and international. And so this is a group effort from not just the city, but the people from the Birding Festival and everybody as a whole. And you know, 
I want to say something about that. When these people come in, they're now coming in in the hundreds to almost a thousand people that are doing this. And they don't stay in Watsonville because we don't have the capacity of the hotels. So all that TOT, all those taxes are going to Monterey, Santa Cruz, and we need to make it come here in order to make this community grow. Strawberry Festival, phenomenal. Was there this weekend with the family, um, all kinds of food, walked around. It was great to see all the different activities and everything going on and the kids. And people were coming up to me, I don't even remember or know, but it was nice. I get pulled away from every single site and everything going on and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. So as someone that has never been to the Strawberry Festival here, I'll absolutely do it again and again and again and again, even when I'm not here in 40, 50 years or whatever it is.